Yep, so let's welcome everybody. Can I ask everyone to please stand up and uh, just say hi, hello to everybody in the room. Okay, please, uh, please say hi to people around, okay? Hi. So, hi, hello.
and I'll, I'll talk to you about that in the future. So in Colossians chapter 4, verse 2 to 4, it says, Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful, and pray for us too that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Okay, so just as a summary, the four things we need to pray for is all starts with the letter O. Okay, first is we pray for ourselves. Wow, wow, I'm impressed. Okay, we first we pray for ourselves, then we pray for one another. One another. All right, very good. And third, we pray for opportunities, opportunities and then we pray for open hearts. Okay, so we pray for ourselves. We pray for one another, we pray for opportunities, and we pray for open hearts. Then, we learn how to care for people. We care for them so much that they will find, they will ask, why? Why are you like that? And they will see it's because of Jesus. Okay? In verse 5, it says, Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. So the idea there is, you take advantage of every opportunity to share the gospel. So, when I talk to you about this, uh, my tagline that I wanted you to remember is this. Care more like never before. Okay, can we repeat that? Ready, go. Care more like never before. So, I'm sure you're very caring. Okay, I'm sure you're caring. But I want you to care more like never before. So that they will, they will sort of become curious. Why are you so caring? And then you'll be able to have those openings to share about Jesus. So how do you care more? Ah, let's see if you can remember. How do you care more? The acrostic we have is the word care. Okay? So what's the letter C? Care more listening. Okay? This is uh, sort of, uh, yeah. Careful listening. So if you were listening carefully during my message, you will remember it is careful listening. And then second is acts of kindness, right? And then R is you're ready for anybody. Right? You just care for anyone. You don't choose. Oh, I'll care for you because you're so good looking. I won't care for you because, you know, you cannot be like that. You care for everybody, anybody. And then E is elimination of any stumbling blocks. Anything that will cause them to stumble, just leave it up. Okay, so that's pray, care, and then we're here in share. In verse 6 it says, let your conversations be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everybody. Okay? I believe if there's something really, something, if you receive a blessing, okay, it, you can't just help but share it. Okay? Now, I've known people, okay, you know, when I was dealing, you know, handling teenagers, when they, when they find a girlfriend and, you know, they have a girlfriend, they're just so excited to share it. I don't even have to ask anything. They already start sharing. Why? Because they, they, it's exciting news and it can change their lives, right? So for us, if we receive great news, we can't help but share it. Okay? So for example, when ma, my wife got pe pregnant, we just couldn't uh, hold it back. We wanted to share it with everybody. Okay? Now, when the, the word share has become almost synonymous to Facebook shares, you know what Facebook shares? Okay? When you see something interesting, what do you do? You share it so that you can post it on your, on your own uh, uh, profile so that others can see it. So we have to realize that if there's something really great that you, that you receive and you feel so blessed, you want to share it to others. And it's natural. You, uh, you don't have to be forced. And that's the idea when we hear about God's Word. When we know that this word can literally change our lives and literally change the lives of others, we cannot help but share it. It's just that, however, we have some, uh, you know, inhibitions that we don't want to share. Okay? Sometimes it's scary. We don't really see the significance. Or will I really share the gospel to those people? Oh, so, you know, we don't really see the significance. Another is sometimes we don't see the urgency. Okay? We just say, uh, I can probably share to that person the following week or the following month. Okay? Or we don't really know what to share. Okay? So you share, instead of sharing the gospel, you share about the book of Ezekiel. 
Ezekiel and Leviticus and all the killing of the animals and the fat belongs to the Lord, you know, and the end times and are you pre-millennial, are you amillennial, are you pre-tribulation, you know. So what if you you are able to explain all of that but the gospel is not shared clearly, okay? So that's the idea. And sometimes we just hope everything will turn out well for the person we care for. We cannot do that. We cannot just hope that everything will turn out well. Okay? The people you know today, it's not by accident that God allowed you to know those people. God wants you to make an impact into their lives. Okay? So what we're going to talk about today can literally change the final destiny of your loved ones. Okay? And it, it requires your part. God wants to use us to share the most important news. Okay? Can you tell your seatmate, God wants to use you? Okay? God wants to use you. Okay? And the most important is sharing the gospel. So let me share with you the process of sharing the gospel. Is that all right? Thank you. One person. Is that all right? I'll share with you the process. Thank you. Okay, so let's pray. Let's pray again. Heavenly Father, as we try to understand this, please, Lord Father God, this is the most important news anyone can ever hear. So we pray that you will speak to our hearts and help us understand this, the right mindset and the right things to do, and then we will glorify your name by sharing the gospel to our loved ones so that they too can experience the changed lives that we have probably been experiencing already. Guide us, Lord. Bless us. Let your Holy Spirit move mightily. Lord, use me as your instrument. This is your message. I'm just your messenger. May, you, may the message fall into fertile soil that will bear deep roots into our hearts. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So, uh, I have three points. Okay? It's uh, no... So and go. Alright? You memorize that? No. So and then go. Alright? So we'll start with no. Okay? No means knowing the proper mindset. Okay? So open your Bibles. Let's go to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 to 7. First is know God's will. Know God's will. It says in verse 3. This is good and pleases God our Savior who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. This has now been witnessed to at the proper time. So it says here, God wants how many people to be saved? God wants all people to be saved, right? All. God wants all people to be saved, all nationalities, all ages, all backgrounds. And, the, and as I mentioned in the past, God wants to save the people that you like and even the people you do not like. Okay? Do, you have, do you know people you don't like? Is that person beside you? No, no, no. Okay? God wants all people to be saved, right? And to know the, come to a knowledge of the truth. Why? Because some people grew up having a knowledge based on traditions. You understand what tradition is? Okay? You grew up and that was been taught to you for a long time and that's where you want to stick to. Okay? Others, their knowledge of the truth is based on personal opinion. That's my opinion. Okay? If that's your opinion, fine. If this is my opinion, fine. So there is no standard. That will never work. That will never work in any society. Because what's good for me is not necessarily what's good for you and it will be chaotic. There has to be a standard. Okay? So it can be tradition. It can be a personal opinion. It can also become popular belief. Okay? It's like the majority belief is also what I will believe in. Okay? But is the majority belief correct all the time? Is the majority belief correct all the time? 
I don't think so. So we have to know this knowledge of the truth based on God's word. Okay? So by God's grace, it was at age 14. Okay? So this was just a few years ago. Okay? I was age 14 when I started reading God's word. I attended Bible studies and I started understanding God's word and God opened my eyes. Okay? At age 14, and I saw the differences between what I previously believed and what the Bible was telling me. So what will I believe? The Bible or what I believe? Of course, it has to be the Bible. And it started changing me like it never did before. Okay? So if I ask you, who among you here you were exposed to reading the Bible during your teenage years? Anyone? You were exposed to reading the Bible during your teenage years. Okay? So a few of you. Others? Below, before teenage years, raise your hand. Anyone? Okay, before teenage years. Okay. So every, everyone else who did not raise their hands, you, you've read the Bible starting at age, what, 50? <laughs> no, I'm kidding, all right? So that's the idea. Okay. So it was not just me blindly accepting anymore uh, what the Bible said or what people said. I really read it on my own. And there my beliefs formed. So it he here is you need to have the proper mindset. Know God's will. God wants everyone to be saved. So in your office, you don't look around and say, okay, I'll share the, to that person. I'll share to that person. That person, no, go to, okay? You don't do that, okay? You desire to share the God's word. What is also God's will here, okay? There is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus. What does this verse say? Because of sin, God separated himself from man. Okay? And there is only one mediator to link back God and man. And it is through Jesus Christ. No one else can redo that link. He is the mediator. Jesus Christ paid for the penalty of all our sins. He paid it completely. So you don't need to pay anything anymore. But receive that gift. It is crazy if you will, if someone bought you a gift, for example, a car, okay? Who would want to receive a car for a gift? Raise your hand. Okay, yeah, yeah. Who wants to receive a car that's working? Okay, just kidding. Okay, so if someone paid a car and gave it to you as a gift, it is ridiculous if you will pay again the dealer. Right? Because it has already been paid for. In the same way, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ paid everything already for our salvation. We don't have to pay again. All we have to do is to receive that gift. Okay? So know God's will. God wants everyone to be saved. For some of you, I know, there, you have loved ones, family members, okay, and relatives who are not yet saved. I pray, and let's pray that uh, God will really open doors and they will see changes in your life and that you will have opportunities to share the gospel to them. Okay? So first, know God's will. Number two is, you got to know my part. Know my part. Okay? Acts 20, 24, it says, However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. The task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. If you read this verse, and maybe if you were really there, you were maybe you were seated on the you know on the grass, and then it was the Apostle Paul actually saying these verses. I want you to imagine that. He's saying, you know, to paraphrase it, he's saying, okay, life is nothing to me. If I die sharing the gospel, then so be it. But what I will do to, to the end of my days is I will share the gospel no matter what. Because for me, this is the most important thing. If it requires my death so that the gospel is spread more, then so be it. Okay? Now, that is the R R B V. Okay, Ryan's Bible version. Don't buy that, okay? But that's just a paraphrase of what, uh, what is being said here. You've got to know my part. God, has, God wants you to share the gospel. I've already I've said before, God could have used anything, right? To share the gospel, correct? 
Okay? He could have made the stars form a shape that says, that will blink. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. You know, he can do that. Okay? He can make animals talk if he wanted to. Okay? But he wants to use you to share the gospel. Okay? So know my part. It also says here that in John chapter 4, verse 35, anyway, I'll just continue with that. It says here, know that now is the time. Know that now is the time. Okay? Don't think, uh, I'll probably share the per that person in the future. No, now is the time. Okay? Uh, John chapter 4, verse 35, it says, do you, not, do, not, do you not say four months more and then the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. It's saying, it's saying, don't delay. Now is the time. There are people there that need to hear about God. And now is the time. Okay? And then lastly, what do you need to know? Know what to expect. Look at this. Know what to expect. Mark chapter 10, verse 29. Truly I tell you, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters, or mother, or father, or children, or fields for me in the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in the present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, along with persecutions in the age to come, eternal life. Now, what is he saying here? Okay. What he's saying here is, if you are willing to sacrifice everything to follow Jesus and to share the gospel, the returns are going to be much, much more. It even says here how many times? Okay? He will receive a hundred times as much. Now, if I ask you, okay, in the banks today, what are the average interest rates in your deposit? 2%? 2.5? The highest percentage is in West Bank, I think, right? <laughs> okay. If you put it in a time deposit, maybe 4%? Okay? That's the interest that you get. Okay? And uh, my mom was good at this okay, in the Philippines. She will have our deposits in one bank. And when she sees that there's another bank that has a higher interest rate, okay, she withdraws all the money here and goes to this bank and puts it there. After a year, she finds another bank. She removes all the money here and goes to another bank. She's really good at this. I don't have the time to sign all these papers and go to the different banks and branches. But she was, she was really meticulous about this. Okay? What I'm saying is, yeah, 4%, 5% interest rate. Okay? But here, he's saying, you give your life for me. That's what Jesus is saying. You give your life to me. And you give your life to sharing the gospel. And you will receive 100 times as much in when? The, the present age. God will reward you more than ever before. And it's not simply financial rewards. There are different rewards that can never be purchased by money. Joy, a loving family, things like that. Okay? So know what to expect. And whatever happens, it may also include persecutions. Okay? You understand? When you share the gospel, it may also include persecutions. But your role is to simply share the gospel. Now, I don't have it on screen, but I memorized it in heart what successful witnessing is. Witnessing is sharing the gospel. Right? So successful witnessing is sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ clearly in the power of the Holy Spirit and leaving the results to God. Okay? Again, successful witnessing is sharing the gospel clearly in the power of the Holy Spirit and leaving the results to God. So I remember a few years ago, I was sharing to these two young men. They were very good friends. I was able to share the gospel clearly. And then in the end, I asked them, would you like to pray to receive Christ? And they both refused. And I asked them why, and you know, and I re-clarified what the gospel is, and they said they still said they don't want to receive uh, Jesus Christ. Okay? Did I fail? What do you think? Did I fail? Okay. 
In the eyes of man, maybe they'll think I'll fail. I fail. But in the eyes of God, I don't think I failed because I just did my part. Correct? Okay. Was I sad? Oh, I was very sad. But I still did my part. Okay? So that's the idea. Okay? That is successful missing. So first, you know these things. Know God's will. Know my part. Know that now is the time. Know what to expect. Okay? Once you know these things, you're ready to share. Okay? So second is, so, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. What after all is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God had, has been making it grow. Here, there's, you know, during the early church, even the Corinthian church, they were already arguing. Okay? Because there's this guy, uh, Apostle Paul, he's well known. But there's also a guy, Apollos, who's a very gifted speaker. And now they're, they're arguing with one another, who are they following? They're, some will say, I'm the follower of Paul. Others are saying, I'm the follower of Apollos. And that's because I'm growing in, in, with that person. And the Apostle Paul is saying, hey, stop the quarreling. Okay? We're just doing our part. We're sharing the gospel. We're reaching out. We're helping people grow. Okay? But in the end, who makes who makes people grow? Okay? In the end, it's it's God. So just for me, for me, what's my role? Prepare as much as I can for a Sunday message. Okay? Pray hard. Ask God to work in our lives. Preach it. But I, I, it's not my role anymore. If you're gonna receive God's word. And you're going to put it into practice. I will do my best. I will challenge you. I will encourage you. Because it has changed my life. I know it will change yours. If you follow God's word. If you read God's word. Okay, you will worry less. You will trust God more. But I can only do so much. Okay? Let God do the rest. So in the same way, we just keep on sowing. And let God do the rest. So how do you sow seeds? Okay, some people were asking, how do I start sharing the gospel to my friends? How do I start sharing the gospel to my loved ones? How do I start sharing the gospel to my office mates or my classmates? Okay? So here are a few things that you can do to sow seeds so that the gospel will be shared. Okay? First is your life transformation. Okay? If I ask you, has God changed something in your life? Mm, okay. Has God changed? Okay, who among you here? God has changed a lot with your thinking. Okay, your thinking has changed because because of God. Yeah, your thinking. Yeah. Uh, how about uh, your words? Your words became more, much more godly than in the past. That's what God changed in your life. Raise your hand. Okay. Very good. Okay. How about your priorities? What? That, that's something that God has really changed in your life. Raise your hand. Priorities. Okay, wow. That's a lot. Okay? So the way you do this is, here's an example of a statement. Okay? Hey, I used to be blank, but God started working in my life. So for me, I can say, hey, you know what? I used to curse a lot. I used to curse every sentence. Okay? And I use it to start my sentence. I use curses to end my sentences. And if I have a compound sentence, I have a curse in the middle. Okay? So God has changed my life. God has changed my cursing. And yet, you know, God started working in my life and my cursing disappeared. For some of you, you can say, you know, I used to have an anger problem. But God started working in my life. Okay? Or I used to be selfish. Okay? I used to be a, a person that's not easy to get along with, and yet God started working in my life. So those are the things that you can share to friends or to people, okay? So another is to sow seeds by sharing some of your quiet times. Has God spoken to you in your quiet times? Yes. Have you been having your quiet times? Yes. <laughs> okay. Very, okay, so I think we should change this. Okay? We should 
change, let's call it meditation time or something or yeah, okay, so anyway, the way you start with is something like this. You know what? I read God's word recently and I learned this. Okay? So for example, I learned uh, I read God's word recently. I was in the book of Daniel, yes. and Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. This was my quiet time yesterday, and uh, but God trusted him. I mean, God, uh, Daniel trusted him, and he was freed from the lion's den. And yet, everyone else, all his enemies, was killed. And that's the lesson I learned from uh, the book of Daniel. So you share your quiet times as well. Okay, number three. Is you share the previous Sunday's message. Okay, say last Sunday the, the pastor said something that impacted me. Okay, uh, it impacted me. And for example, it, uh, the pastor said challenged us to be more prayerful. And this and that's how that's what I learned. Okay. Unfortunately, for some of us, we might say, you know. The pastor was so inspiring last Sunday. I was just so pumped up. The message was so great. And then your friend says, Really? What, what did he talk about? You know what? The pastor's message was so good. It was so great. Okay? And then what did, what did you learn? I can't remember. It was just so good. It was so good. I was like, I was walking in heaven. I can't remember what, but it was so good. Okay? You know, you know, that's why you take down some notes. But the idea is, you just learn one thing. Okay? You learn one thing and then you share it to someone. Okay? Here, number four might be easier if you're very reflective. You share blessings and God's goodness. So you can say something, you know what? God is good. He blessed me by... Okay. So I can see, it's very easy. I can say, you know what? God is good. Uh, my daughter is now one month old. And by God's grace, she's been gaining so much weight and she's a joy, she's a joy to take care of. So those are things. And I'm sure in your lives, there's something that you can share that God has blessed you with. Okay? Number five is, you share challenges in God's lessons. You can say, okay? It's been tough recently. It's been tough recently, but God is teaching me lessons like this. For example, you know, it's been tough recently at work. My boss keeps on asking for some papers and stuff, and the deadline.